from the Daily Trust News Center, this is the News Hour. On News Hour tonight, Nigeria President elect Bola Tinubu arrives at Abuja after one month in Europe ahead of transition. Inspector General of Police launches probe into Adamawa Resident Electoral Commissioner's role in controversial election. Flood submerges houses, many displaced in Jalingo metropolis of Taraba. And on the international scene, death toll in Kenyan starvation cult rises to 58. Hello. Good evening and welcome to Trust News Hour tonight. I am Eugenia Abu. As Nigerians prepare for the May 29th inauguration ceremony that will bring President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu into office, a crowd of supporters welcomed him back into the country on Monday. The President-elect had taken a one-month break following the conclusion of the 2023 presidential and governorship elections. Noel Sampson was at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport to witness his arrival and now reports. The plane conveying the president-elect Bola Tinibu landed at the presidential wing of the Namdi Azikiwe Airport at about 4.20 p.m. local time. A large crowd is here to welcome the president-elect who is accompanied by the Speaker House of Representatives and other leading members of APC. With Tinibu gone for about a month, it seemed political activities that would determine the direction of the incoming government were stilled. Now, those activities can resume to the delight of the party faithful who believe his coming to power will bring about progress in all aspects. This man is going to give Nigeria a new hope. Then hope will be what you for. Whether you are a young man, you are an old, it's going to cut everybody alone. It's going to be a teamwork. So that's why we are all here to support him. To support all our electorate who have given him the mandate for him to become the president-elect be, and, the, and the Shetima himself to become the vice president-elect. So we are happy and that's why we are here. We are here to show him our support. We are here to show him our solidarity to all Nigerians. Now that he's back in solidarity, we are all gathered uh, to encourage him to ensure that he comes by May 29th, he will hit the ground rolling. And what are the issues for Nigeria, for contemporary Nigeria? We're talking about the economy. We're talking about security. We're looking at the fragmentation in terms of the differences that was demonstrated by the opposition. Differences in religion, in ethnicity, and regionalism. These are the contemporary issues, which I know Asiwaju, with so much capacity over the years, we unite Nigerians so that we can all develop in a rapid sequence manner. We should expect a whole lot in the positive direction. Look at what he did in uh, Lagos State from uh, 1999 to 2007. So there is no doubt that we can preempt what is likely going to happen in Nigeria, counting from 2023 to maybe 2031, I want to believe. So Nigerians will be happy to see this quintessential president unleashing development and real, you know, real development in the real sectors of the economy. All means of speaking to the present elect was not successful because of the mammoth crowd present at his arrival, but he has his work cut out for him in the following days. The immediate assignment right now is to set forth the strategy to produce the leadership of the two chambers of the National Assembly, which will ally with the party's choice and fine-tune the zoning arrangement that will be acceptable to all. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. In the meantime, the Inspector General of Police has sanctioned an investigation into the rule of the resident electoral commissioner in charge of Adamawa State, Hudu Yunusa Ari, in the recently held supplementary Adamawa State governorship election. This comes after the Commission's appeal to the Inspector General seeking an investigation and possible prosecution of Yunus Ari over allegations of misconduct. The force public relations officer, Olumuiwa Adejobi, in a statement on Sunday, said the police is in receipt of the letter from INEC dated April 18, 2023, detailing the alleged impropriety of the actions of Hudu Yunusa Ari, the Adamawa State Resident Electoral Commissioner. Adejobi noted that the commission called on the police 
to investigate and possibly prosecute the resident electoral commissioner for his actions. He added that the inspector general has directed an investigative team to work in collaboration with INEC to expedite action on the contents of the letter. The All Progressives Congress in Taraba State has expelled a governorship aspirant of the party in the just concluded 2023 general elections, David Sabu Kente, for alleged anti-party activities. The party has also suspended the senator-elect for Taraba South District, David Jimkuta, for anti-party activities during the elections. At a press conference in Jalingo, the state capital, the chairman of the party, El Sudi Ibrahim, asked Sabu Kente to stop parading himself as a member of the party, adding that he has recommended the senator-elect to the National Executive Committee Office for expulsion. El Sudi insists he remains the chairman of the party, as reinstated by the court, against the controversies of a vote of no confidence passed against him by some members of the State Working Committee. The incoming president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has been called upon to give priority to tackling of insecurity matters and unemployment and assumption of office, as these has been described as major issues confronting the country for now. The Kwara State Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Sunday Timothy Adewoli, gave the advice during a church program in Ilorin. The Christian leader also mentioned the need to tackle epileptic power supply in the country, which he said, if improved, will enhance the economy of a country. Where any government that is coming in now, we want to charge uh, the president elect Tinobu to please. The first assignment is to work on the security. Security architecture of this diocese, I mean, of this uh, uh, Nigeria, needed to be overhauled. Not only that, is to do everything possible to checkmate the activities of the bandits, the kidnappers, the killer S men. It is only in the atmosphere of peace that we can have progress. So he should do on his priority list how to tackle security. Then he should focus on unemployment. We've, we have the timid youth that are not employed. And that is why it is, it is, it's like sitting on a keg of gunpowder. Because it's a time bomb. It can explode at any time. So he should focus on that. The, the infrastructure is already decayed. The traditional ruler of Agara, Kababunu, local government area of Kogi State, David Obadoffin, has been reported dead in the custody of his abductors 12 days after he was kidnapped. A family source stated that the monarch died last Thursday as a result of torture from his abductors. The abductors of the monarch agreed to collect 2 million naira for his release and one other lady identified as Temidayo Elewa when the hoodlums noticed that Obadoffin was becoming too weak. A source added that while waiting for the ransom to be delivered, the hoodlums blindfolded the lady and relocated her to a different place in the bush in their bid to close up their track. Obadoffin was said to have died before the said ransom could be delivered to his abductors in the bush. Meanwhile, the locals stated that Temidayo Elewa, who was abducted along with the monarch, has been set free and since reunited with her family last Saturday. The state police command is yet to confirm the incident. The Kano State Fire Service on Sunday confirmed that five people died while six others survived a boat mishap at the Kanwa Dam in Madobi local government area of the state. The service public relations officer Samino Abdullahi, who confirmed the incident, said the boat mishap occurred on Saturday at about a quarter to six. The PRO said the victims were from Fage in Fage local government area of the state. He said investigations into the boat mishap had commenced and reports would be made available immediately after. Residents of Abuja Phase 1 in Jalingo, the Taraba state capital, are again counting their losses following the havoc wreaked by the early morning rainfall of Monday, April the 24th. Many houses were submerged and destroyed by the rain. The rain, which started at about 1 in the morning, lasted several hours, a situation which led to flooding in the area and some parts of the Jalingo metropolis. 
the houses flooded are located by the bank of River Mayogwe. Though no life was lost, a property including household items and foodstuff worth millions of naira were however destroyed by the flood. Laying of the pipeline for Nigeria's Trans-Saharan Gas Project, the AKK, has now attained 400 kilometers distance, representing 68% of the right-of-way from Ajaokuta in Kogi State to its destination in Kano. This came to the fore during a routine inspection led by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation NNPC Limited Management Team on Monday in Ahoko, Kogi State. Chamun Dabeng now reports. The Ajakuta Kaduna Kano AKK pipeline, which is being developed by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, is a 614 kilometer long natural gas pipeline which will originate from Ajakuta and pass through Abuja and Kaduna before ending at a terminal gas station in Kano. The project is estimated to cost $2.8 billion and forms the first phase of the Trans Nigeria gas pipeline. Work at the AKK pipeline is ongoing despite rumors that NNPC Limited has lost its financiers due to an alleged 570 percent inflated contract sum this project has not stopped for one day we are continuing to fund it despite the fact that we do not have third party financing on this project we have so far spent over 1.1 billion dollars on this project from our cash flow so we do not need any support on this project we will deliver this project as we speak now our contractors we don't owe a dollar to our contractors today yes there are challenges security issues we have lost men and we are so sorry to their families. We continue to share their grief. 70% of all welding work have been completed. There are very many other components of this project. So once you are able to complete the welding and put certain basic installation, you can actually flow gas into this line and as other parts of the project continue to be delivered. This line will flow 2 billion scope of gas. And what this means is that you are delivering 2 billion gas, scope of gas every day into this line powering industries, powering power plants, creating a gas-based industry. And this is the ultimate object. The project is said to be nearing completion with procurement at 88%, while engineering design stands at 93.48%, just as 94% of the total line pipes have been manufactured locally in order to boost local content. On the sidelines of the visit, journalists were told that upon completion, the project will facilitate development in the country. This project, as the GMD has said, um, will trigger a lot of development uh, after its completion by stopping gas flaring, then supporting the um, gas-based industry, uh, power generation, fertilizer company and so forth. As you've seen the challenges involved, we are not aware of those challenges as they come, we tackle them. So as you said, the pipeline construction is already 70 something percent. Yes, whereas we are deploying more resources to, to complete it and deliver uh, value to Nigeria. The project was primarily conceived to revive ailing industries around the corridor. It will also feature construction of direct pipeline installation DPI across the river Niger, as well as several ongoing special constructions. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. This is News Hour on Trust TV. Coming up after the break, we take a look at how children enjoyed Eid celebration in their own way. Do stay with us. Now, as part of efforts to support Africa's goal of strengthening... Now, looking at the activity chart, as you can see right here, a total volume of more than 30... Written a Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe and... How secure that they? You can see security men with blood. This is the road leading up to the... For Libya, if you look at England squad, you are looking at EPL, you are looking at their names. You are not looking at...
Thank you for rejoining us. This is News Hour on Trust TV. A recap of our top stories. Nigeria President elect Bola Tinubu arrives at Abuja after one month in Europe ahead of transition. Inspector General of Police launches probe into Adamawa resident electoral commissioner's role in controversial election. Moving to more stories now, the Nasarawa State Police Command says it has arrested a 24-year-old suspected car snatcher on the far Chanze for allegedly stealing a Toyota Sienna bus belonging to his father. A statement signed by the State Police Public Relations Officer Raman Nansel and obtained by Trust TV in Lafia, the state capital on Monday, said at the time the incident happened, all efforts by the command to recover the vehicle from the suspect proved abortive. The suspect, according to the statement, was later apprehended on April the 22nd, 2023, in his hideout at Karu Village in Karu local government area of the state. DSP Nansel narrated that when the suspect was interviewed on the whereabouts of the vehicle, he confessed to have sold the vehicle to one Sunday Ola of Kurudu, FCT Abuja, at the rate of 1,400,000 naira, stating that the suspect led the police to FCT and in the process, the receiver of the vehicle was apprehended and the vehicle was recovered. The acting commissioner of police for the FCT, Ahmed Musa, has met with traditional rulers of both the Hausa and Gwagi communities in Guarimpa to broker peace between both groups. The meeting was also to deliberate on possible collaboration necessary to keep the youths in check and oust troubleshooters in the communities. It followed mild tension along 3rd Avenue at the Guarimpa axis of the Federal Capital Territory due to a squabble between some Hausa and Gwagi youths on Saturday. The fracas between the two groups led to serious injuries of two of the youth who were conveyed to the hospital where one eventually died as a result of his injuries. A statement by the FCT Police Public Relations Officer, Josephine Ade, said one suspect has been arrested and is currently assisting the police in their investigations to ascertain the immediate and remote causes of the crisis. The statement said the acting commission of police in charge of the FCT has charged the traditional rulers to consistently encourage the youths to imbibe peace and pursue grievances through legally approved channels rather than taking laws into their hands. She said the police has intensified surveillance patrols in the areas to monitor the situation to ensure that it does not further escalate. In the meantime, the Plateau State Police Command says it has uncovered a plan by suspected hoodlums to attack the Plateau State Assembly Complex. The police said the intention of the perpetrators was to cause breakdown of law and order a statement issued on Monday by the spokesperson of the command, Alabo Alfred, said the commission of police in the state, Bartholomew Onyeka, has enhanced security around the State House of Assembly complex as a proactive measure to prevent such villainous plan. The commission of police further urged the peace-loving residents of Plata State to continue to give useful and timely information to the command to enable the police respond quickly to distress calls from the public. He also advised parents and guardians to caution their wards and children not to be used by selfish persons as tools of perpetrating evil capable of distorting the peace currently enjoyed in the state, urging everyone to go about their lawful businesses as he would do everything within his constitutional powers to sustain peace in the state. A community in just north local government area of Plateau State has called for unity and love for one another, irrespective of marked differences, in order to achieve sustainable development. The community made the call on Monday during a one-day community introspection colloquium organized by the Just Political Coalition Forum. Ado Musa completes that report. With the theme, Rebranding Politics of Just, Using Peace Building as a Tool for Growth, the group said, despite several crises that hit the state, especially Just North, People must come together as one entity and embrace one another, irrespective of their religious or ethnic backgrounds. The group said, although crises have impacted on the community, 
They were still confident that if people of Jaws would organize themselves and have better representation, they will be able to achieve their socio-economic gain for the area. Speakers at the event spoke on the history of Jaws, past experiences and how peace could be attained. Which was very, very unfortunate development. So many lives were lost and so on and so forth because of the marginalization. Thank you. And also appointment of Malam Ado Mohammed M. Ibrahim as the Education Secretary too brought about crisis. Understanding your history determine that is your participation at present. We are part of JOS. Our grandparents are part of JOS and we are born here and we grew here. Now we need to evaluate our history and then to know our level of participation. In every society, you find that as time goes, that society keep on metamorphosizing into different things. I'm standing modest. Throughout my second school days in San Roma College here in Jaws, I was the only Muslim in my class from Form 1 to Form 5, but I was the best in Bible knowledge from Form 1 to Form 5. When I wrote my work, I had one. Excellent in Bible knowledge. While speaking at the event, the Secretary General of Jamaat Nasrul Islam, Sheikh Khalid Aliyu, called on religious leaders to use Islamic values to promote peace. Looking at the uh, unhealthy story of the past conflict violence, which has not taken us anywhere. Therefore, it is indeed important to have some in introspection to look inward and see how we can better the living situations since we have enjoyed peace for some time. Then I think nothing can be equated with peace. One of the conveners of the event, Baba Akau, said the essence of the program is to sensitize the people on how to ensure development of the community. Other speakers at the occasion also stress on the need for all to cooperate for the development of the community. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has warned Nigerians to be prepared for serious lightning activities in the month of May. The agency said the country would experience about 2.9 million lightning strikes during the month under review. NEMA has therefore warned Nigerians to remain indoors whenever lightning occurs. According to NEMA, South-South, Southeast, North Central and Northeast states would experience more intense lightning strikes. Barely days after Eid al-Fitr in Nigeria, children in rural communities of Katsina State continue to pay Salah visits to relatives, family and friends. In this process, gifts in cash or materials exchange hands in appreciation, a situation that makes relationships solid, all in the spirit of Salah. This transfer of culture and traditions from one generation to another has been sustained, especially amongst the Hausa Fulani of northern Nigeria. Abdullahi Yamadi visits some rural communities in Mani, Rimi and Kaita, local government areas of Katsina State, and filed in this report for Trust TV. From generation to generation, some beautiful House of Fulani cultures have passed down the years. Many cultural practices have, on the other hand, suffered a serious setback, while few others are either at the verge of extinction or distorted. Happily, the tradition of House of Fulani people to organize some cultural events which spans at least a week after its Salah festival is still going strongly. Children save some pocket money to enable them attend and participate in some plays and performances at some of these cultural events. <laughs> children have their own unique ways of spending their savings like this.
Many have forgotten this local drink, Kolora, at market places during its Salla festival in northern Nigeria. <laughs> For these children, the choice is Kulora, while other kids prefer this. However, some children are not only here for this place and performances, but are here to make new friends, hang out, and pose for photographs at Jani Village Square Photoshop. Some elderly people speak on the rich cultural heritage and its socio-economic impact on the residents. As far as I know, this culture has been here for over 50 years, and each Salla children converge here to enjoy themselves their own ways. We have special drummers, dancers, and singers, mostly at night. Observers say traditions and cultures like this may soon disappear if nothing is done urgently to improve consolidate and preserve them. Abdullahi is my Amadi, Prost Television News. Katana. A truly beautiful tradition, very nostalgic. Thank you, Abdullahi Amadi, for bringing our childhood back for us. You're watching Trust TV News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Documenting the Nigerian story.
Thank you for rejoining us. You're watching News Hour on Trust TV. More stories now. The National Bureau of Statistics says the average price of 5 kg cooking gas increased from 4,600.57 naira recorded in February to 4,610.48 naira in March. This is contained in the Bureau's Cooking Gas Price Watch for March 2023, released on Monday in Abuja. The report said the March 2023 price represented a 0.22% increase compared to what was obtained in February of 2023. It said on a year-on-year -year basis, the increase was 22.03% from 3,778.30 Naira, recorded in March of 2022. On state profile analysis, the report showed that Quara recorded the highest average price of 4,962.87 Naira for 5 kg cooking gas followed by Abuja at 4,940 Naira and Adamawa at 4,915 Naira. It said on the other hand, Rivers recorded the lowest price at 4,204.45 Naira, followed by Abia and Anambra at 4,220.15 Naira and 4,232.75 Naira respectively. Kenyan police have recovered 58 bodies, mostly from mass graves in a forest in eastern Kenya, thought to be followers of a Christian cult who believed they would go to heaven if they starved themselves. The Kenyan Red Cross said 112 people have been reported missing to a tracing and counseling desk it has set up at a local hospital. The death toll, which has repeatedly risen as exhumations have been carried out, could rise further. Followers of the self-proclaimed Good News International Church had been living in several secluded settlements in an 800-acre area within the Shakahola Forest. Kenya's police chief, Jafet Kome, visiting the scene, said the deceased included 50 people found in mass graves, as well as eight who were found alive and emaciated, but later died. He added that 29 survivors had been rescued and police are still searching for potential others. Foreign nations pushed on Monday with frantic evacuations of their citizens from chaos-torn Sudan, where heavy fighting raged for a tenth day between forces loyal to two rival generals, as army and paramilitary forces again clashed in Khartoum and across the country. Terrified Sudanese have endured acute shortages of water, food, medicines, and fuel, as well as power and internet blackouts, the UN said. At least 427 people have been killed and more than 3,700 wounded, according to the United Nations agencies, which also reported Sudanese civilians fleeing areas affected by fighting, including to Chad, Egypt, and South Sudan. Morgues are full, corpses litter the streets, and overwhelmed hospitals often have to stop operations for security reasons, said Dr. Atiyah Abdullah, head of the doctors' union. The United States and multiple European, Middle Eastern, African, and Asian nations have launched emergency missions to bring to safety their embassy staff and Sudan-based citizens by road, air, and sea. In the meantime, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has confirmed plans to evacuate over 2,000 Nigerians in crisis-hit Sudan on Tuesday morning. The agency's director of special duties, Onimode Bandele, who stated this on Monday, said the movement is to be perfected between the Nigerian embassy in Khartoum and the NEMA director general. Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Onyema on Sunday put the number of Nigerians in Sudan at 5,500. He disclosed that out of the number, 8% of them are students, adding that some countries had only evacuated their diplomatic staff and not all of their citizens, as speculated online. Onyema urged Nigerians in the crisis-torn country to stay where they are before the evacuation begins. 
As the federal government fine-tunes strategies to achieve a pathway for the return of its nationals, a domestic carrier, Air Peace, has volunteered to evacuate Nigerians stranded in war-torn Central African country of Sudan. The exercise, which will not attract any charge, according to the chairman of the carrier, Alan Onyema, is part of his patriotic contributions, especially to Nigerian students and others stranded in the crisis. The Air Peace chairman said if the Nigerians could be moved to a neighboring country, the airline would fly there and evacuate them, as Sudan's airspace is closed from civil aviation flights. Onyema said he is compelled to help because Nigeria cannot afford to lose her citizens in that country, adding that it will be his own commitment to make sure that the stranded Nigerians in the war-torn country are safe. He said that everything must not be left for government alone, especially as the situation calls for urgency and immediate action. India will overtake China as the world's most populous country in the coming week, hitting almost 1.43 billion people, the United Nations said Monday. Last week, the UN's annual State of the World Population Report said the milestone would come by mid-year 2023. India is topping China due to both rapid growth in its own population and a decline in China after hitting 1.426 billion last year. China's fall is heavily tied to decades of maintaining a strict one-child policy for married couples, which ended in 2016. In addition, its falling birth rates are also attributed to the rising cost of living and the growing number of Chinese women going into the workforce and seeking higher education. For India, which has taken much longer than China to get population growth under control, the fertility rate was 2.0 births per woman, just below the 2.1 replacement level. About 60 civilians have been killed in a village in northern Burkina Faso, according to the local prosecutor, who announced an investigation into the attack. Citing information from police in the town of Waigoya, prosecutor Lamin Kabore said the attack took place in the village of Karma, near the border town with Mali. Armed groups are thought to control about 40% of Burkina Faso in regional unrest that began in Mali in 2012 when hardline groups hijacked a Tuareg separatist uprising. Burkina Faso's military rulers this month announced a general mobilization as part of a plan to regain territory lost to armed groups linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIL, ISIS. You're watching NewsHour on Trust TV. The news continues after this break. Do stay.
Thank you for rejoining us. Time now to move to sports. The Nigerian Volleyball Federation has invited 16 female players to a national training camp which opened in Kaduna on April the 22nd. According to the Federation, the camp is expected to prepare players for upcoming girls under 19 World Championship in Croatia and the CAVB Girls Under 19 African Championship. The body said the team for the international championship would be selected from the crop of players in the camp. The pavilion, which is currently hosting the first Abuja International Marathon Expo, has become a mecca of sorts as long-distance race enthusiasts from within and outside the federal capital territory daily come to collect their running kit in readiness for FCT's first international marathon. The marathon exhibition began on Friday with registered runners from neighboring states such as Kogi, Niger, Nasarawa, Kaduna and others, including members of the diplomatic community who come to the venue daily to collect their kits. The Abuja International Marathon is classified into three categories, five kilometer student run, 10 kilometer family run, and the 42.195 full marathons. According to race director Lukayode Thomas, registration is free. It will close on April 28, 2023, which is the last day of the expo. You might be wondering which category I'll be joining. We'll see. Young Africans head coach Nasruddin Nabi has attributed his side's victory against Rivers United to their impressive marksmanship. The Tanzanian Premier League champions put one foot in the semi-finals after a stunning 2-0 win at the Godswill Akpabio International Stadium in Uyo. Congolese import Fiston Mayele opened scoring for the citizen in the 73rd minute after skipper Bakari Mwangyetu set him up. Mayele scored the second nine minutes later with Mwangyetu also the provider. The second leg will take place this Sunday at the Benjamin Nkapa Stadium, Dar es Salaam. Interim manager Christian Stellini has been sacked by Tottenham Hotspurs after four matches in charge. The decision comes a day after Spurs were thrashed 6-1 at Newcastle. The performance chairman Daniel Levy has described as wholly unacceptable. Stellini, 48, was appointed on 26 March after Antonio Conte's 16-month spell as sports boss came to an end. Ryan Mason, who worked under Stellini and took charge when Jose Mourinho was sacked in 2021, succeeds him. Sunday's defeat at Newcastle, where they trailed 5-0 after 21 minutes, was a significant blow to Spurs' hopes of securing Champions League qualification. Tottenham are fifth in the Premier League table, six points behind both Newcastle Newcastle in third and Manchester United in fourth. And before we go, here's a kicker. Old buses are often referred to as chicken buses in Zimbabwe. Thanks to overuse and poor maintenance, many are in terrible shape and have become an eyesore on the road. Thanks to a startup art group, some are eyesores no more. Thanks to the visibility of the project, it has also served as a chance for many businesses to adopt murals to beautify their premises instead of walls being just plain white or black, looking drab and uninteresting, businesses can use painting to colorfully depict their products with art. Take a look. I mean, the bus on its own, the fact that it's, 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 it has been remodeled with, uh, with, with the different Zimbabwean authentic stories. So it's a moving, authentic Zimbabwean story. Yeah. So, so that said, on its own, uh, it's, it's one, it's a feature along the lines, which, which for me, I feel like as far as, you know, domestic tourism is concerned, you know, it, it'll be amazing just even just imagine people just coming through and say like, let's get into a, let's get into this bus, let's travel all the way to maybe let's say maybe closer to warm Rambo shower. Mm. 
Yeah, so we started in 2017, but the idea was, was birthed in 2016 when we were still at university. Uh, we stayed together, we were in the same class, and we did art together. So us being uh, us graduating in 2016, um, we just said to ourselves, guys, what can we do? Because the idea of employment much, was, much, was not much on our minds. The immediate thing is, was to combine our skills. A skill in advertising, Y skill in painting. And before we, we even did the registration and coming up with the ideas, we traveled to SA. And that's where my dad stays. And he showed us what art can do and how art can bring money, especially in a, in a very commercial um, sense. The idea was like, let's do a series of work that people can see so that people can appreciate it's one thing to sell something on a graphic point of view it's another thing to sell something on a physical point of view of this is our skill set this is what we have done we're able to do a project uh it's called girl power zw uh under the hashtag and what's the umnawami where we did how many mirrors by the way 28 28 across the country. 28 murals across the country in Harare, Bulawayo, and Chita. And it was, to date, it's still one of the most also iconic because every work that we simil similarly do, it has got a certain way of teaching us. It, it, there's new lessons altogether. Part of our work, also, what it does is it educates and it's and it engages with communities. What's the message that, it, having done the work, what's the response or what's the feedback that you get from the communities? Do they, are they for that? What really, you know, it's, it's all of those conversations that when, you, when you're having with people within communities that people will make you, others are in awe, others, you know, they're similarly, it's, it's, it's a new phenomenon that they're seeing for the first time, especially in other rural uh, spaces. Zimbabwe's chicken buses getting a makeover. Art is life, life is art. And with that, we have come to the end of the Trust TV News Hour. Don't forget to follow us across all our media platforms. On behalf of the entire team here, we hope you have had a lovely salad break. I am Eugenia Abu. Good evening. Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour.